In this video, we'll demonstrate how to properly service your power inflator. These instructions only apply to power inflators provided by Deep Sea Supply. Other manufacturers and suppliers may have similar units. We can't be certain that all makes and models of power inflators can be serviced in the manner demonstrated here. Please watch this complete video before you begin to disassemble your power inflator. A malfunctioning power inflator can create a real risk to the diver resulting in injury or death. Use caution. Power inflator service does not replace daily maintenance. It is possible to service the cartridge valve and quick disconnect nipple without removing the inflator from the corrugated hose. Remove your inflator from the corrugated hose only if you need to service the oil inflate valve. If the unit does need maintenance, step one is to remove your power inflator from your corrugated hose. You should pay attention to the alignment of the power inflator relative to the rest of the hose. Most hoses have a mold mark on them that you can use for realignment. To remove the inflator from the corrugated hose, first remove the zip ties using a pair of diagonal cutters, being careful not to damage the hose. Once you have the hose removed, take a medium-sized straight-bladed screwdriver and insert it into the hose side of the power inflator. This will wedge the large hex nut in position while you unscrew the oil inflate button. Be careful as the button is spring-loaded. You may need a pair of pliers to gently unscrew the knob. The oil inflate consists of the button, a spring, a plastic bearing, and a chrome-plated brass piece with an O-ring on it. After you remove the oil inflate button, you can remove the cartridge valve. For this, use the Deep Sea Supply Inflator Service Tool. The cartridge will then slide out. Then you can remove the quick disconnect nipple from the body of the power inflator, also using the DSS Service Tool. Now you can disassemble the cartridge valve. Use the small hex in the tool to hold the small end of the spool and unscrew the knob by hand. At this point you can, if necessary, Remove and replace the O-rings with a small brass pick. If the plated components are dirty or have some corrosion on them, they must be cleaned before reassembly. Soaking in a white vinegar solution with a little toothbrush cleaning should be sufficient. Then rinse everything in fresh water. Now you can reinstall the O-rings. Be sure you are using the correct O-rings. Two of the O-rings are very close in size. The number 11, which goes on the quick disconnect nipple, and the number 12, which goes on the lower end of the valve body. Be sure not to mix those O-rings up. The two small number 6 O-rings on the valve spool should be well lubricated with a silicone lubricant. Now you are ready to reassemble. Insert the spool into the cartridge valve and then insert the smaller of the two springs in the button. Note that the cartridge valve has a brass insert and is typically installed with a drop of Loctite or anaerobic thread sealant. We recommend that you replace the Loctite on reassembly. Tighten by hand with the DSS inflator service tool. Now you are ready to reinsert the cartridge valve into the body of the power inflator. The rest of the O-rings need little or no lubrication as they are butting up against plastic. Tighten with the inflator service tool. Use just enough torque to make it snug. You do not need to over tighten these connections as over tightening can damage the inflator body. Install the quick disconnect nipple, torquing it so it's just snug. Then slip the long oil inflate piece with a hex and O-ring into the hose end of the power inflator. Add the plastic bearing, small end first, then add the large spring and the button. This button does not need thread lock as the threads are plastic. Wedge your screwdriver back inside the barrel to hold the hex in position and screw on the oil inflate button as tight as you can get it by hand. Prior to reattaching the power inflator onto the corrugated hose, you can attach the unit to a tank and check for normal operation. At this point you can also submerge the unit to check for leaks. Then, insert the power inflator into the corrugated hose and realign so it's in the same orientation as when you removed it. Use no sealant or adhesive. Soapy water can aid in fitting the corrugated hose to the power inflator. Attach the inflator to the hose using two zip ties. We recommend using Thomas & Betts cable ties that feature a stainless steel retention tang. Cheap cable ties can and do break unexpectedly. Once complete, attach the unit to a tank and resubmerge to check for bubbles. We also recommend you leave your BC completely inflated overnight to be sure it does not leak. As always, if you have any questions or you do not feel comfortable completing this operation, contact us at Deep Sea Supply or take the unit to your local dealer.